tribes, now whatever faith you come from, have been established through their theological principles and beliefs, a set of moral codes that have influenced civilizations and societies for thousands and thousands of years. But as many of us lose our connection with religion, how do you explain those big, huge theological stories, those huge religious texts to a new generation? Now, that's what our next guest wanted to do with the Hindu scriptures called the Gita. Sonal Sashdev uh, Patel joins us now and I'm hoping she's there on the line. Hi Good morning, Dev. Sonal. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to have you with us. Tell us all about this project. Tell us about the Gita. Okay, well, so the, for people that don't know, the Gita is part of this larger Hindu spiritual text called the Mahabharat, which is about these this great battle that takes place between the two warring families. And the Gita is just one chapter of that, where the battle is about to commence. And one of the great warriors is in the middle of the battlefield, and he's hesitating about going to war. So, you know, the Gita is this fantastic text but it is quite heavy and quite tricky to understand um, and so I wanted to create a new uh, book for children that would help them to access some of these difficult concepts um, and our book which is co-written with um, Gemma Wayne Catan is um, explains that the battle is actually a metaphor uh, between our good tendencies and our bad tendencies that go to war every day on the battlefield of our life. And, it, you know, it's not just a story of um, these two great armies that are going to war. And Sanal, do you think that's true of um, other religious texts, that they've got they've got stories in them that can be sort of, well, not translated and, and changed, but certainly still speak to the generations today? Yes, absolutely. And I think that they just have to be, um, you know, um, sort of explain to children in a way that they can relate to it because even if they are, understand these difficult theological concepts if they think it's got nothing to do with their everyday lives then you know it's not influencing their behaviour or their feelings and then I don't think it's doing its job properly. It sounds, sounds to me like you had quite a challenge on your hands to set this huge theological document and to make it uh, in understandable for children. How do you even begin with a task like that? Uh, well um, the book is based on a particular Particular interpretation by an Indian saint named Paramahansa Yogananda and um, he drew out some of the key concepts which are meditation and introspection and those I think are really tangible tools that children can use in their everyday lives to you know to build a more peaceful and, and happier life for themselves and we tried to create a story that would be compelling in itself so our main character Dev is um, feeling quite you know, anger and grief at the loss of his father. And, you know, all children and adults go through times in their lives where they're upset or they're confused or they're angry. And so bringing out messages from the Gita around meditation, we think will be, you know, will be valuable for children to help them to deal with those scenarios. Can I, can I just um, in, uh, bust in here? Uh, lovely talking to you. You're talking about um, meditation for children. Yes. And I would have well, I would have assumed, would it not have been more beneficial to introduce this into children at a young age so that they can grow up calmer, if that makes sense? There, there was a study in the States of kids that were, when they were put into detention, instead of sitting there and telling them everything that they'd done wrong, they would meditate and they would focus on you know their behavior and it was found that a lot of the, de the detentions in the school actually decreased because of meditating yeah yes absolutely i mean it's the dalai lama who said that if every eight-year-old in the world was taught meditation then we would eliminate violence from the world mm. in one generation so you know i think meditation is very powerful and we see that running through our story as well where this boy dev sits eventually to meditate and what happens in this magical land within his body we see the change that occurs in the landscape and the characters when he changes what we you know what he's doing and you know as we've been sort of touring with a book we've been leading guided meditations for children and I've been really amazed at how open they are to a con this concept when they learn it from a young age because it becomes you know much easier at that point and for those of us who are not of a young age <laughs> <laughs> never too late <laughs> never, absolutely never too late what are your what are your sort of top tips if, if someone wanted to you know sat at a desk or you know broadcast on radio too how do we find that center how can we just take a few minutes because I I noticed that 
that you put out on social media a picture of you waiting to speak to us in the studio in London and you said that you were, uh, it was a great place to do your morning meditation. Yeah. Now, I've sat in some of those studios and I've not found them very conducive to calmness. So you <laughs> tell me, how do I embrace that? Yeah, well, this place is conducive to calmness because it was quiet. Um, but I think that people who don't know anything about meditation can really take advantage of the um, guided meditations that are out there. And there are lots of different types. You know, there are spiritual meditations and then there are non-spiritual ones with apps. So I think that if you're t a total beginner, then it's worth um, hooking on to something that's already out there that can lead you through the process of sitting with a you know, straight posture and, you know, lifting your gaze to, up to the point between your eyebrows and um, just also to start um, to start slow so start with just a couple of minutes and you know and don't dive in and try and sit for an hour of meditation because it be bit, might put you off and might you be recommending a technique like that to a certain group of young men that are hanging about on wednesday night in russia could that be <laughs> something that might help absolutely in fact there was an indian cricketer who spoke about um our book recently talking saying exactly that that you know sport as well as about this battle of raging emotions and things like meditation can be a really powerful tool to help with that thank you so much for talking to us the book is fantastic and the illustrations are absolutely beautiful that's Gita the Battle of the Worlds by Sanal Sach Patel and it's just gorgeous it's out now thank you Kate and Angie for thank having you. me thank you thank you here's Paul Heaton and